Hey there, welcome back to Photoshop in 5. I'm photographer and digital artist Dustin Volkema. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my favorite way to visually sharpen my images inside of Photoshop using Camera Raw's advanced masking features. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're in Photoshop. We can see that I do have a smart object here. And the main reason for a smart object is so that we can create smart filters with Camera Raw. So this gives us a very non-destructive way to go back and make some edits and changes to all of the settings that we're going to create here in a moment. It's really good to work non-destructively, especially if you're doing client work and so on. With our smart object selected, press Shift Control A, and that's going to bring up Camera Raw for us. Now with Camera Raw open, you'll see on the right hand side that we're starting in the Edit tab. But what we're going to want to do is actually head down into the Masking tab here. But what we're going to do is actually use the People feature down at the bottom. And we'll see that once we hover over that, our entire subject is selected. So let's click on Person 1. We select the skin, we'll do the facial skin and the body skin. We'll see that now we can create a mask based off of just these selections here. And that's going to allow us to adjust the skin separately from the clothes and the features on our subject. Now it is possible to head down and create two separate masks if we so chose, but in this case, we're going to just click on create and create one mask for the face and the neck so that we can work on the clothes and so on independently. We have mask one done. Let's double click here and we can rename this to skin. Press enter to accept that. And then we'll create another mask for the clothes and the facial features. So we can head up to create new mask, select people. And here we have person one again. Now, if you do have multiple people in your shot, this will give you the ability to go in and select multiple people. So we'll select the eyebrows, the iris and pupil, the lips, hair, facial hair, and clothes and we can create a new mask containing all of those. We'll rename this new mask, Clothes and Features. Press Enter to accept the name change. And now we can begin our adjustments. With the Clothes mask selected, we'll head down to our Properties panel. We can scroll down to Effects. And when I'm sharpening, what I like to do is pretty much work with this visually instead of just doing the edge sharpening that we might be used to. So what we're going to be doing here is actually working with the texture and the clarity sliders together. The clarity is going to be adding contrast to the midtones, which is going to give us a really nice kind of vibrant pop. It's almost adding like a really nice contrast and depth to the image. And the texture is going to allow us to control how much texture we're placing in one place versus the other. So you'll see that a little bit more as we start to get to the skin specifically. We can take the clarity slider and bring this up quite a ways. And immediately, we'll see that contrast in the midtones taking effect. We can see that it gets quite a bit crunchier <laughs> the higher that we go. But we may not want to bring that up too far. We'll sit somewhere at maybe 20 for this. If we zoom in, we'll take a look at the beard area. We can see that as we bring clarity up, we can get really crunchy there. This can look great from further away, but maybe not so good as we're closer. Sit somewhere right around 30 for the clarity. And now for the texture, if we bring our texture slider up even further, we can see that now, we're getting a lot more texture in those areas. But what we'll do with the texture is bring this to maybe something like a value of 10 and let that work itself out here. Zoom back out of the image. Inside of the mask panel here, we'll click on skin. Let's take a look at those same clarity adjustments that we had made. We'll zoom into the face. And as we bring clarity up, we can see that we're now getting a very gritty look here. And this look is one that I like to use for things like album covers, uh, maybe sometimes movie posters, getting a really nice gritty look quickly. But if it's overdone, you can get very crunchy values in the pores and blemishes on the skin all show like crazy. It might not be the best case for every scenario. We can actually bring this up and use this as a bit more of a macro dodging and burning so that we can get some really nice depth in the face there. 
I will bring this skin maybe to a value of something like 20. And then the texture slider allows us to adjust the textures. So we can see here as we bring this back and forth, if we go to a lower value, you, we can kind of get it like a plasticky look. It may not be the best. But if we head all the way up, we can get a very gritty look. So in this case, what we're going to do is head back just a little bit on this. And I like to use this as more of an evening approach to the skin, kind of like a micro dodge and burn, if you will, where we'll use the clarity to add a little bit of pop to the skin overall. And then we'll tone some of those details back with the texture slider in a negative direction. And this can be the result here. So now up in our mask panel, click on the eyeball and we can preview before and after. And we can see that our image is already looking visually sharper. From this point, what we can do is head up to our edit panel and then down to the detail panel here. We'll click on detail and we'll see that we have our sharpening values. Let's raise our sharpening value up. We'll say somewhere maybe around 100 here to start off. If you go way too high, we can easily see how that skin is just starting to look quite rough. The cool feature here is that if you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can click on the masking slider and start to really feather this in to where you want that adjustment to take place for the sharpening. So what I like to do is get right in and make sure that the eyes are very visible and some of the bigger features here on our subject will sit somewhere maybe around 75 for this adjustment. And now we can see the difference. As we zoom out of our image here, and bring this in a ways, we can see the adjustment. So what we can do is use the backslash key, which is going to give us a preview of the before and after. So what we've done at this point is now created local sharpening adjustments for just two parts of this subject. You can do quite a bit more than this and select the clothes separately than the beard and the facial features and so on. This is one of my faster approaches that I like to work with just to get a job done quickly and still have it look quite good. Now, if we want to use this or save this as a preset, that's quite easy to do. We can head down to the presets panel. We'll see the button here with two circles that are kind of ellipsing each other here. We'll click on that and we'll see the presets pop up. What we'll do is click on the three dots right below the presets button here, and we can say create preset. In this preset, what we're going to want to do is first name it. So we can call this local sharpening. And we'll say medium. How about that? And inside of this, what I'd like to do is create a dash and say masks just so that I know that there are masks here. And those are the only things that are going to be brought in from this adjustment. And now what we'll do is we're going to uncheck everything in our list here, except for the masks at the bottom in the detail. So we can click on masking. We'll open this up, make sure that we have other masks turned off if there happen to be any there. And we'll just work with the clothes and features and the skin mask that we had just created. So at this point, this is going to save for us in our user presets and we can click OK. There we go. Now, inside of our user presets, we have the local sharpening medium with our masks and we can be done here. So let's click OK from camera raw. We may want to go in and actually make this an action, which is quite easy to do. We can open up our actions panel and we can click on create new action. And for this new action, we'll call it medium sharpening and we'll click on record and save that to our default actions now we can see that it's recording with the little red icon here same as you would have for video and what we'll do at this point is press shift Control a to open up camera raw click on our presets tab click on our local sharpening medium masks or whatever you named your preset give it a moment for those adjustments to apply and then we can click OK. So this is going to get quite crunchy because we have doubled up now. We can stop our action from recording and we can right click inside of our smart filters and say clear smart filters. And now we can select our medium sharpening action, play that action. And in just a moment, we'll have the nice sharpening that we had previously from our 
created preset. And that's it. It's pretty fast. It's a quite simple process to head into Camera Raw, make some quick adjustments, save a preset, and then create an action so that those adjustments you made can be used and batched in an automated way across multiple images at the same time. Now, if you like this Photoshop and 5 content, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified whenever there's a new upload here. Now, until I see you in a future video, make sure to stay creative. I'll see you then.